on The Reno Show. I reveal four ways to style your living room. Patricia Lohan breaks down Feng Shui for your bathroom. Tammy Guest is back with another healthy hack for the Reno site. And I get started on a DIY furniture upcycle project. this lounge room a refresh not a full reno because it had been updated previously but finally the carpet is gone and instead I have this highly pet friendly people child friendly durable flooring it's a laneway plank from carpet court I think it's in natural oak but that is only the start of it, realistically. This is a square living room, nearly a perfect square, which means that it has multiple ways that we can furnish it. So a lot of people think once you're finished renovating, once the paint's on the walls and the floor is done, that it is over. But for me, you're not even halfway there. So today what I wanna show you is some really cool and different ways that you can furnish this room and then how you can style it to top it off. So we have in here two three-seater lounges. These are gorgeous lounges once I have the cushions on from Castlery. So I'm gonna show you four configurations that you can use in a square or nearly square living space that you might have at home. Layout number one. This is where we're using the two Castlery three seaters orthogonal to each other, so at 90 degrees. This is great because number one, it means the people here, fantastic viewing position. Number two, it gives a oppositional seating. So it gives an opportunity to have a conversation between the two lounges. And number three, the armchair in the corner is a nice feature. It's a nice isolated reading spot and provides extra seating to these. The drawbacks though, the guys here can't see the TV super well and this lounge does block a little bit of the traffic and the flow. Even though there is enough room to walk around, there is a downside to this layer. Now layout number two is simply a tweak of number one. We moved the lounge opposing the TV back a little more to increase this space and brought in an extra armchair for an extra bottom, which now gives us three, three and two. So technically eight people could enjoy this space around a coffee table in the middle as a conversation. Drawbacks, pushing this three seater from Castlery back further means it does impede that entry to the room just that little bit more. Perks, we have more people to have more conversation and more good times in the room. Now layout number three removes all of the armchair options and simply has two opposing three seaters. Now this is visually gorgeous because it opens the room up, you get to see straight in from the entryway and it creates great symmetry, which is so calming. But we do have some drawbacks and that is that there are very few people that can watch the TV comfortably. Realistically, you have to be sitting at the opposite end of the lounge, so probably only two people in this entire setup can watch TV comfortably. On the upside though, everyone can have a great engaged conversation and it looks good. All right, layout number four, and this could have been the winner. I could have saved the best till last. So we still have one lounge pretty much hasn't moved much. We have the two three-seaters against each wall, which means that we're using the full width 
of this square room. We've brought in two armchairs, so we're now seating eight in here. But what we've done is we've spaced them out so it's not completely blocking the flow from the adjacent rooms. Which also means, with these armchairs being anchored close to these lounges, it means if we were to have some side tables in here, they would be accessible by the people in the armchairs and the lounges. Yes, without saying, one of the downsides of this is that the person sitting at either end of the lounge closest to the telly is going to get a sore neck. But the good news is, this is the one layout where eight people get to have a conversation and six people get to watch the TV. Now, I might have settled on a layout, but I tell you, there's a long way to go with styling this room. Starting by putting the cushions on this gorgeous three-seater from Castlery. So now I'm gonna show you speed styling of this space, and it is all about layers, starting with the rug. amount of texture. If you are loving on this rug, make sure you get across to the homeware store on naomifinlay.com and you could nab yourself one just like it. These sofas from Castlery, they're called the Tanner Sofa. Now there's a couple of reasons why I chose these. I like the slightly formal look and shape of the back cushions, but I love that they were slim line and at the same time, not looking overly trendy and overly scandy. The fabric is also a big winner of mine because this is a family home and the texture and the variation in color is a winner to hide all sorts of things that are gonna probably get dropped on these lounges. So rug in, furniture in, very practical side tables so that we can be of use and a very practical coffee table. It could be a feed up, it could be a coffee, a wine, coloring in while watching something on telly, you name it. So this room is packed with function but now I want to bring some more beauty into here. Let's see some texture, some movement, some books, some foliage, and some lamps. And there you have it, perfect space, styled and ready to enjoy. talking about how to stay well on the Renault site. And today's topic has me a little boggled as a scientist. It's about hydrotherapy. When I think about that, I think about someone bringing around a dog bath to like the <laughs> Renault site. You know those hydrotherapy dog baths? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what, are, what are we doing on site doing hydrotherapy today? That could be a bit interesting. It could be a bit random. <laughs> 
So what's this all about? So, uh, hydrotherapy's made a bit of a resurgence with uh, a thing called the Wim Hof Method. You're not talking about drinking, are you? No, I'm not. I'm talking about plunging ourselves into water of a different temperature. So it's all relative to where we are. That's so right. is it hotter or colder? So, it's the change in temperature that makes the difference. So, uh, you're hopping into a hot shower, you know, getting up in the morning, focusing and concentrating, yep. getting ready for a huge day on your Renault site. Dirty, 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 working, yeah, working, that's working. Right. Waking yourself up and then turning it to cold. Because? Because. <laughs> turn the, because? <laughs> turn the shower to cold. So, turning, what happens when your body heats up is that you're going to be getting a whole bunch of circulation happening at your skin, at your surfaces. Yeah. So we'll vasodilate, lots of blood running around our surface. That's right. That's the blood. But the lymph, right, where you've been exposing yourself to all sorts of possible mold, possible water, dirt. damage, dirt, dust, all sorts of little insects and bits and pieces in, and off-gassing that's happening in All that in stuff that comes out of the walls. It actually gets into your system. And really? your lymphatics, which is your garbage disposal yep. chute inside, it sits there and causes some problems if you're not regularly flushing it. So, if I'm in the shower yes. and all of my lymph is flowing and being amazing, yep. why would I then freeze it? <laughs> Your lymph, unlike your uh, circulation, doesn't have its own pump. So what happens when we s switch it to cold is that it pumps into the largest garbage disposal area and essentially shunts it out of your system. So you're saying shower, 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 feeling great, cold shower. Last five seconds. And then my lymph goes, yeah, it goes like evacuate, evacuate. Yeah and it dumps all of that stuff that you've been exposing yourself to, so you're clean and fresh for the day. It also, there's some amazing research that shows it increases your productivity by about 60%, because it not only does that for your lymph, it does it for your circulation, it increases the amount of oxygen that's available to your tissues and your brain, and then continues for the rest of the day. This is just like when my trainer said to me the other day, if you do this right now for the next 10 minutes, your body will keep burning like it's running 10 kilometers all day. So it's the same thing. Yeah. I can do this tiny hack yeah. and I can fruit from it for the entire day. That's right. All right, I'm challenging everyone. Seven days, five seconds. Five seconds at the end. Pure cold water. Yeah. And you can't turn it back up to no. hot? <laughs> can you do it with us? Absolutely. All right, seven days team, on it. I want to see on social if you've managed to do it. Thanks, Tim. Pleasure. Do you do that every day? Yeah. The often forgotten and certainly forgotten room from me when it comes to Feng Shui is our bathrooms. And we have Patricia back with us to talk about all things Feng Shui mm -hmm. in our bathrooms. Yes. I can't believe I didn't even think about I Feng know. Shui in a bathroom. And you know what? It's really simple to feng shui a bathroom because really? there's only a few things that you need to keep in mind. There's a whole lot of water in there though. Now that I think about yes. it, shower, bath, vanities, mm -hmm. loo, floor waste in the yes. floor. Yes. So essentially everything. That was such a grown up. Yes. Everything, everything in your bathroom is to do with releasing and letting go and cleansing and clearing. And ridding. Like and ridding. Yes. Okay. So one of the big things though is, it, and it's also associated a lot with the water element because it's got a lot yeah. of water in there as you said. Yeah. So water is associated to prosperity as well, like the flow oh. of water and abundance. But when you, and we talked about that in front of your house being the entrance and the energy comes in. Yes. But you want that energy to come in and stay in. Okay. But there's a lot of areas for it to leave in a bathroom. So there's the sink, the toilet, the bathroom. There's the like bath, literally the piles. piles. I have a double vanity. Like yeah. it's like a double bunger. Yes. Yeah. So you want to try and keep your bathroom door closed and keep the toilet seat closed as well. So okay. that means that it's not, the, when the energy comes in, it comes to the door, it doesn't go in. So you want to yeah. stop that from going in. And the other thing is like trying to limit the amount of blue. So we okay. can get like really, and I've seen a lot of designers um, really go mad for like blue bathrooms and adding a lot of blue, but that's just really can cause a lot of financial difficulties for people because it's like too much water. Is it like it's magnifying much, it too Yeah, much. it is. It's just too much water in the area, in that area and when you have that it, um, it can just deplete the finances a little yeah. bit more so you just keep the doors closed now what if your bathroom is already totally blue and you're, you can't change it and um, your tiles bring you know, a whole world of in. people that are like oh my god you have a literal 
literally going, like, oh my god, oh my god, Honestly, oh my god. when I share things like this, it's really mindful to be like, if you, it is like that, what this one thing is not going to be the only factor. Like feng shui is about many, many, many different layers. And it's not about like, this one thing is about feng shui, my house is about feng shui. I'm There's doomed so forever. Yeah. So yeah. like you just can do what, you work with what you've got, we work with what we've got when we work with people's homes, um, yeah. and your bathroom, keeping the door closed, keeping the toilet seat down, yeah. keeping it nice and clean, and then adding some earth in. So for example, if you do have a, bed, a bathroom, you know, you could stick with earth tones, brown towels, cream towels, um, some like wicker baskets. Bath? Tim or no, okay. or woven. Yeah, woven, woven elements. Woven, woven elements would be really good. Or what about plants? even like a yes, or even a a woven floor mat. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you can totally go from bring that kind of earthy colours in and just like dampen the energy a little bit. Damp, and like slow it down. Slow it down, basically. Yeah. And what about I, this? Is this maybe a this is a novice question? Should you leave your plugs in your bath then when you're not using them, so the plugs plugged up the waste? Yeah, you can do. And I've seen some people like leave their plugs in. I've seen other people like actually even put like, you know, pebbles in their sink to slow the energy so it slows down through the earth. Like there's a, there, wow. you know, you can do that. It's totally there. But yeah, keeping the stuff, the, the plugs in is a good idea. Okay. Well, I have push up down plugs. Yeah, perfect. Okay. We'll keep That's them perfect. down. Keep yeah. them down at night while we're asleep. Keep that energy in the room. Yeah. I like it. Thanks so much, Patricia. Thank you. It is beautiful, hey, but it needs a bit of love. Yeah, it's a bit dusty. Uh, dusty. <laughs> it's a bit dusty. And I think that someone's tried to make over it over time because there's like a crystal knob here, but we've got amber glass down the front, and then we've got really traditional old sort of filigree handles. So that tells me that someone's already had a crack at it. Okay. So I want to, and I can also tell that it's been repaired over time yeah. because you can see all the um, nail holes on here. So I believe that maybe some of these have come off and they've been popped back on over time. Always start with a good sand and then brush away the dust. These handles are being swapped to better match the dresser, which means these ones need to go. After a quick sand and all the dirt wiped away, the holes need to be puttied up. After taping up the edges and sanding back the gapping on these drawers, it is finally time for the fun stuff, painting. I'm using this amazing Pink Porter's chalk emulsion paint that I purchased from my local Bristol store. As we bought this dress a second hand, there were holes that needed to be filled in. To do this, I just used a small amount of silicon and pushed it into the holes with my finger and then wiped away the excess.
To create an interesting look, I decided to whitewash the desktop. I added one fourth water to three parts Porter's chalk emulsion paint. Then I painted it as I would normally, but before the paint dries, I used a clean damp cloth and wiped most of the paint off. Once the rest of the dress's paint has dried, I go over it with a whitewash to create a dusty pink. And once my whitewash has dried, it's time to apply a clear stucco wax. I run the wax over the top of the dresser with a brush and then buff back with a clean dry rag. To really finish this off, I've lined the four drawers with self-adhesive woven wallpaper. All you need to do is measure the lengths and the widths and then cut it out. Remove the backing and then apply the wallpaper. I use a brush to ensure that there are no lumps and I get the paper into the corner. For the handles, I mark out the centers of each drawer and drill a new hole for the new handles to screw into. Luckily, there is one handle left over, and I'm going to be super gluing this to stick it in place on the top half of the dresser. Nearly there. All that is left to do now is move this beautiful dresser to its final destination. And once we are there, I'll be adding some custom glass into that door. Thank you so much for joining me for season three of The Renault Show. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below or over on my Instagram, at Naomi Findlay Official. What was your favorite project of this season? It would also mean the absolute world to me if you could like this video and click the red subscription button below so you don't miss any of the exciting new content that will be coming out in the near future. Until next time, happy renovating.